Hey everybody, this is one of my favorite topics, the civil rights movement. Hopefully this, you'll find this helpful and hopefully you'll find this interesting. I love this topic. I've, I've asked students for years why they don't like this topic and maybe they just don't understand that this was a scary time. This is a time of fighting. This is a time of rebellion and it's relatively modern. Okay, these people, most of them are still around. Hopefully I can help you to understand what is so important about the civil rights movement. Now let's go back way right after the civil war. Just let's talk about the reconstruction amendments because these are going to be relevant. Now I don't have a lot to say about the 13th amendment, but anyway, it freed the slaves. The emancipation proclamation did not, the 13th amendment did. Now, this is very important. The 14th Amendment. The 14th Amendment says that if you're born here, you're a citizen. Okay, that's important. But the 14th Amendment also says that no matter who you are in this country, you are guaranteed equal protection under the law. Now, some of you are like, yeah, right, equal protection. Yeah, I get that because not everybody has gotten equal protection under the law. For example, the Japanese and during World War II, the Japanese Americans who were locked up in internment camps, for example. Also, the 15th Amendment. 15th Amendment says that the right to vote shall not be denied on the basis of race. However, the South did all kinds of things to keep African Americans from voting in this country, such as literacy tests and poll taxes. Okay, so that's going to be a major issue in the civil rights movement. Okay, so this is very important. Way back in the 1890s, there was a major Supreme Court case called Plessy versus Ferguson. Now, anytime you see the word versus something versus something, that means that is a Supreme Court case. And, you, and there are a few that you need to know for US history. Plessy versus Ferguson was about a man in New Orleans who went on a streetcar, he was mixed race, and he was told to sit in the black section. And he said, no, I want to sit in the white section. He sued the streetcar company and won. However, this it, case was appealed all the way to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court ruled that states do have a right to keep blacks and whites separate, meaning segregation is legal. Now, so for the next 50 or so years, this is going to be the law of the land. And that's why you're going to see what are called Jim Crow laws that require segregation. Now, just in case you don't know, segregation is separation, segregation, separation. So this is segregation, Rex Theater for Colored People. The theaters were separate, the water fountains were separate, the bathrooms were separate. The uh, African Americans were required to sit in the Jim Crow gallery in some of the bigger cities if they didn't have their own theater. This is a Dallas bus station. Notice it says colored waiting room. Uh, this is a sign in Texas. And this is just a montage. You can hit pause if you want to take a look at something. This, I like to show you color pictures when I can. African Americans were required to get their food to the side and to take it go, to go. They were not allowed to eat inside with the whites. This is Dallas Colored High School. This is now Booker T. Washington in downtown Dallas. This was a fair ticket back then. Admit one colored school student and Back then, there was only one day of the month where African Americans were allowed to go to the fair. It's called Negro Achievement Day. This is a color picture in Alabama. And you notice the water fountains are white only, colored only. Okay. Here's a picture of a college football game. Notice the blacks and the whites have to sit in separate sections. Okay. So let's try some multiple choice on oh, whenever I do multiple choice with you hit pause if if um, so you can do it yourself.
In the late 1800s, the Supreme Court's decision in Plessy versus Ferguson did what? It paused maybe the, the space bar. The answer is B. Okay, it created legal justification for segregation laws. Okay. All right, this is W.E.B. Du Bois. We learned about him in the progressive era. Okay, but the NAACP is a very important organization. It stands for the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. These guys are lawyers. And what they do is they go to court and they try to get the laws changed. So they fight in the courts. The NAACP, they don't do the marches or anything, sit-ins or anything like that. They are lawyers and they spend their time in the courts. So they are going to try to change the law. And so here's an interesting picture. You see the tall guy? That is Thurgood Marshall. He is a name you need to know for this class. He was the lawyer that went to the Supreme Court, to the Supreme Court and said, segregation of schools should not be legal. It's a violation of the 14th Amendment equal protection. So this is very important. Brown versus Board of Education of 1954. It overturned Plessy versus Ferguson and it ended school segregation. So the Supreme Court has spoken. Now African-Americans and whites should be integrated. They should be integrated come to, to come together. Okay, and this is Thurgood Marshall. He was also, not only did he litigate the Brown versus Board of Education case, but he also was the first African-American Supreme Court justice. Okay. All right. Now here's a colorized picture of Rosa Parks getting arrested. By the way, she looks like an old woman to us, but that's just because of the fashion and the hair. I think she was about 45 years old. Okay. And, and you can say that's old, but she's not the old woman that you all think she is. Okay. And we all think she is because of the fashion. She was arrested because she was told to move to the back of the bus. She did not. Now, she worked for the NAACP, so don't think of her as some helpless victim. Okay, she was a fighter. She was brave. Once she went to jail, that's it for Rosa Parks. Her story is, as far as I know, over. In Montgomery, Alabama, the African Americans, they boycotted the buses. Make sure you know the word boycott. Boycott is when you refuse to give your money to a certain business because of some reason. And so the African Americans of Montgomery, Alabama for over a year boycotted the busing system. And this boycott took a lot of leadership. It took a lot of organization. Who was their leader and organizer? A young man 29 years old named Martin Luther King Jr. And here's a picture of him shooting pool. Why was he shooting pool? Because he had to go to the rough parts of town to convince these guys not to engage in violence. He wanted a non-violent protest, a non-violent boycott. He felt, and I believe he was right, that if they were violent, then the newspapers would have put really bad headlines. Oh, look at these colored folks, they're violent. No, he said, no, we want, we, we want the newspapers to show that we are nonviolent. And here's a picture of him getting arrested. Here is his wife, Coretta Scott King. So while the NAACP fought in the courts, Martin Luther King led the boycott in Montgomery, Alabama. Now, aside from just the boycott, but Martin Luther King, I want you to understand how brave he was. He was arrested 30 times. Okay, this is not, you probably think of him as the guy who did the, I have a dream speech. Yeah, he, he was arrested. He, his house was shot at. Imagine the fear of him and his kids. Uh, he had a wife and kids at home and they found a bomb under his house. They shot holes through his window. This is scary stuff, people. Okay, this isn't just about 
the I have a dream speech and the letter from Birmingham. He was a fighter. This is a scary time. So this picture was staged, but as you can see, she was sitting in front of a white man. It's a good picture, okay? So Martin Luther King Jr., it's good to know the civil rights organizations. Not only was there the NAACP, but then there was the SCLC, Southern Christian Leadership Conference. Martin Luther King Jr. was a minister, and he was the leader of this organization. His philosophy was nonviolence, just like Gandhi, just like Cesar Chavez and Dolores Huerta. He believed in civil disobedience. Think about the word disobey. Disobedience is when you break the law for the purpose of changing the law, like a school walkout, okay? Or trespassing. So Martin Luther King Jr., and check out the button here, Southern Christian Leadership Conference, black and white hands holding. Okay. So the Brown versus Board of Education case said that blacks and whites must attend the same schools. Do you think the governor of Alabama is going to let that happen? You think the governor of Arkansas is going to let that happen? No. They're like, come make me. And that's exactly how it was for a while. So this is Governor Orville Falvis, and he was the governor of Arkansas. And in 1957, the same year as Sputnik, he, he took the Arkansas National Guard and he blocked the entrance of the schools to keep African-Americans from attending school. And, um, and so that is a very big showdown. The governor of Arkansas is saying states' rights. We don't want African-Americans in our schools. But President Eisenhower said, no, 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 no. I'm sending federal marshals down there. I'm going to escort these African-American children, the Little Rock Nine, to school. And I'm going to send the 101st Airborne, the freaking army, down there to get rid of the mobs and to force the governor to allow the Little Rock Nine to attend school. So, so you see that armed soldiers escorting high schoolers to school at Little Rock Central High School, Little Rock, Arkansas. This was in 1957, President Eisenhower, the same year as Sputnik, 1957. So keep in mind, this was just a couple of years after the bus boycott, okay? So here's a quote from Eisenhower. Hit pause and read that. Okay. So what do you do now? You can't, you've got all this segregation. You've got all these laws against blacks and whites being together. You can't boycott. You can't boycott something that doesn't want your business anyway. So a new nonviolent tactic is going to be needed. And that is the sit-ins. This is the first sit-in in North Carolina. Notice the man behind the counter is African-American. And from what I read, he said, hey, man, I just got this job. Get out of here. What are you guys doing here? Not everyone was in support of these sit-ins at first. But then they, they caught on. Even And these were not started by Martin Luther King. These were started by college students. These are started by people who were a little bit more brave than Martin Luther King Jr., um, they would dress very nicely. They, were, they would practice to not fight back. Do not fight back because that's going to affect how the newspapers paint it. They would go inside and sit down at the counter, order a burger and a shake. And sometimes it was violent. Okay. There was always somebody outside waiting to take their place. Look how young these guys are. Okay. And they were just ready to take their place. So these are all young people doing the sit-ins. It had to be young people because adults, they would get retaliated against. They'd, they'd uh, lose their car. They'd lose their job because they were considered a troublemaker. So a lot of the civil rights movement was done by young people. Okay. You can see how there, there are somebody pouring things all, all over them. Notice that there are whites and blacks doing the sit-ins. So yeah, it got violent, sometimes hot coffee. Sometimes they would get beat up. 
or, or and obviously they were called names and, and all that stuff. Sometimes they, they were arrested. Even though they weren't breaking the law, they were arrested. So not only were there sit-ins, there were swim-ins at the beaches, kneel-ins at churches, drive-ins at motels, study-ins at universities. This is St. Augustine, Florida. Notice that's, that's a white guy getting beat. On this day, and you could say this is progress, there were just as many whites arrested as black people that day. Okay? But yeah, beaches had to be integrated just like anything else. Okay? And this motel owner was pouring acid into the swimming pool. I don't think anybody got hurt, but it's kind of freaky if you're inside the pool. Notice blacks and whites together. That's the way a lot of the civil rights movement was. And notice how young they are. Okay. Freedom Riders. Oh boy, this is a story. It was illegal. And this was done by an organization called CORE. These guys were young and very rebellious. They would get whites and blacks to get on a bus, sit together and drive throughout the South, go into waiting rooms in the South, and you can see that this is very dangerous. The KKK pulled up to the side of this bus, shot a hole through the window with a shotgun, and then threw a Molotov cocktail inside. And then when the, they escaped from the bus, they were beaten up. All of them were beaten. A lot of violence, a lot of violence in the civil rights movement. Okay. Look at these southern bus stations and the and Pretty soon, President Kennedy and Attorney General Robert Kennedy were forced to protect these buses from white mobs in the South. Kennedy did not want to get involved, but they forced Kennedy to do that. Kennedy is known as some civil rights hero, but it took a while to make him come around to it. Okay, All kinds of people were beat up. Lots of people went to jail. Okay, so what was the goal of the protest depicted or shown on this map? Notice it says 1961 Freedom Rides. Notice the lines are drawn through the South. The answer is, hit pause if you need to, the answer is C. Okay, so why risk all this? For newspaper headlines. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but you want the headlines to be favorable to your cause. This is a, from the Birmingham Children's March in 1963. I hope you watch the video of the Children's March. Look at this young man being attacked by dogs, but he's not fighting back. If he fights back, then the newspaper would have a different headline. The kids filled the jails all just for being on the wrong side of town, trespassing, parading without a permit. Once the jails are full, the cops have no control, okay? And this was where the famous Birmingham Fire Department shot water hoses at these kids. And they were kids, they were kids. Middle schoolers, elementary school, high school, they were kids, they, these were not college students. And that water had pressure behind it. It hurts sometimes. Okay. And then after that march, the KKK bombed the church and killed four little girls in retaliation of this children's march. This is a violent time. Okay. So because of the Children's March and because of those newspaper headlines from the Children's March, President Kennedy gave a speech, which was something he was really good at doing. He said, we need a law that's going to protect African-Americans in this country. And to support this civil rights bill, we had the, civil, we had the March on Washington. This is where the famous... I have a dream speech was made and all many other speeches were made that day. Martin Luther King's was the most famous. I want to say something that you might find interesting. No women were spoke, spoke that day. No women. It was all men. 
which shows you that how far women still need to go in their fight for equal representation in this world. Okay, so this is important. The Civil Rights Act of 1964, it banned discrimination in hiring in public places, discrimination in public places such as restaurants and buses. And this is President Lyndon Johnson. You need to know Lyndon Johnson. Lyndon Johnson does not get enough credit for civil rights. He was such a good president, except for the Vietnam War. We blame him for the Vietnam War, but as far as achievements in civil rights, you've got to give Lyndon Johnson credit. It, he would, Lyndon Johnson was the one who pushed this through Congress. And yeah, he used Kennedy's assassination. He said, let's do it for the boy. He used Kennedy's assassination to help him with that. But he did more for African Americans than any other president. So the federal government responded to which issue by passing the Civil Rights Act of 1964? Hit pause, the, maybe the space button. The answer is discrimination by employers. Okay. Which government poster is directly related to the Civil Rights Act of 1964? Hit pause. The answer is that one. Okay. What was the main result of the events referred to in these headlines? Hit pause, look at the headlines, and notice the years. The answer is expansion of political and economic opportunities for minority citizens. Okay. All right. Also, the 24th Amendment outlawed poll taxes. Now, let me ask you this. Would you pay $20 to vote? in today's money? You probably wouldn't. This, the poll taxes, polls are where you vote. And so the poll tax was designed to keep African Americans from voting. Because if you're a poor farmer, you're not gonna pay $20 to vote. It was just a way to keep African Americans from voting. This is important. So the Voting Rights Act basically said what the 15th Amendment already said. It said you cannot have, you cannot deny people the right to vote. It outlawed literacy tests, which were these stupid tests that nobody could pass, and they were designed to keep black people from voting. And poll taxes. Yes, I know the 24th Amendment did that too, but this was a law based on that amendment. So yes, it, it, it led to more African American voting. Okay. So this probably happened before the Voting Rights Act was passed, but these core volunteers would go down into Mississippi and risk their lives to get these African Americans to register to vote. You register to vote back then, you were in so much danger. They would also retaliate by taking away your car, firing you. These college students, black and white, would go down into Mississippi in the summer uh, and try to do what every college student thinks they can do, save the world. And they'd go down there to register African Americans to vote. Three of them got murdered. This one got beat up. You know, this one went to jail for, because for carrying a placard, like that's even against the law. This rabbi was beaten up for, with a tire iron for registering voters. It's a very violent time. So these, to get the Voting Rights Act passed, you had these marches from Selma, Alabama to Montgomery, Alabama, and they would march. Can you imagine how dangerous it was to get out there and march in Alabama when you're in a parade of African Americans? Extremely dangerous. Okay, and, and this was called Bloody Sunday. This guy in the light white coat, he will become a congressman of Georgia. He still is, I believe. And he got beat up so many times in the civil rights movement. But this is called Bloody Sunday. The cops just mowed them down with horses and beat them with sticks. And there's John Lewis that I was talking about a second ago. And so eventually, 
Under the protection of the federal government, Martin Luther King Jr. and his wife will march from Selma to Montgomery and, and then do a speech. And this all was for voting rights. This was to get the Voting Rights Act passed. So when you pass the Voting Rights Act, you're going to start seeing more African Americans in Congress. This is Shirley Chisholm. She is the first African American to serve woman, the first African American woman to serve in Congress. She was from the New York, somewhere in New York, I forgot where. So look at this up here first, poll taxes, voter intimidation. The passage of legislation to end these practices resulted in what? More minority political participation. The Voting Rights Act of 65 eliminated, hit pause, the answer is B. It got rid of literacy tests, these crap tests that were designed for you to fail. Which government action was intended to ensure that African Americans could exercise their 15th Amendment rights? So you need to know what the 15th Amendment did. The answer is C, voting. Which statement best describes one of Shirley Chisholm's most celebrated achievements? She was the first black woman in Congress, so there is your answer. Hit pause if you need to. Martin Luther King Jr. sadly was assassinated in 1968. This is the last picture of him alive. And there's a picture you can see his knees bent after he was shot by a sniper. Okay. The Black Panthers were not a, a non they were not a nonviolent organization. But that doesn't mean that they were violent. The Black Panthers were led by Huey Newton, and here's a quote, armed resistance if necessary. So that doesn't mean that they were violent, it just means that they were not nonviolent. They weren't like Martin Luther King. They believed in self-defense. They believed in knowing the laws in making sure that the cops don't pick on them. They were based in California. Take a moment, hit pause and read all of this. All of this is important. They, this is a good organization. Yes, they scared white people because that's what happens when black people carry guns around. It scared the white people. But the point is, is that they just saw things a little differently than the nonviolent Martin Luther King Jr. During the Civil Rights Movement, the Black Panther Party's tactics differed from those of Martin Luther King Jr. because the Black Panthers called for, and the answer is C, the use of armed resistance if necessary. Which table organization's name correctly completes this table? Hit pause, look at it. The answer is the Black Panther Party. Okay, who is Cesar Chavez and Dolores Huerta? Both are equally important. They both led, they both fought for migrant workers' working conditions in Southern California. And they organized strikes. They organized a great boycott nationwide. They organized a nationwide boycott. So imagine it's 1968 and you go shopping at the grocery store and you run into people out front with a sign that says boycott California grapes. Do not buy the grapes. Why would they do this? To get the workers to treat, to be treated right, to have bathrooms, okay, to have water, fresh drinking water, and to not be sprayed by pesticides. That was their mission. Here's Dolores Huerta. Definitely type that in and watch at least the first 25 minutes of that video. It's really good. It's really good. Okay. Okay. How did Chavez accomplish the change referred to in this excerpt? Um, hit pause and read it, but the answer is boycott. This poster depicts an organization originally formed to advocate what? 
Notice um, there's Chavez, and notice that Si Se Puede. Uh, Barack Obama stole that when he ran for president. Yes, we can. Yes, it can be done. He stole that. The answer is better treatment of migrant workers. Which of the following was a direct result of the civil rights movement? More political participation by minority groups. Okay. All right. Okay, and that is it. Thank you very much.